Hello and uh, welcome back to Data Driven Methods in Dynamical Systems. So I, this is our first lecture uh, and today we're going to be covering a very important topic that uh, spans uh, data science. And in fact, it can be used uh, for image compression, exoplanet detection, seeing around blind corners, solving non-square linear equations, facial recognition, and uh, talking to your mother on the cell phone. And it started out by being used by psychologists to determine someone's intelligence. But uh, the algorithm itself doesn't take a whole lot of intelligence to get through. Uh, in fact, it can be implemented on your computer with uh, just a few uh, clicks of a button with most modern software pa packages. And this is the singular value decomposition. Now, if you are like me and uh, you went through a mathematics course uh, for linear algebra, uh, and it was aimed at pure mathematics, uh, in quotes, um, then you likely hadn't heard of the SVD before. Uh, I remember going through uh, undergrad and even all of my graduate school and never really confronting it. Um, what we did care about was the fact that if you have uh, a self-adjoint matrix, then it's diagonalizable. I, and that means that it has a complete eigen decomposition and self-adjoint matrices also give you that the eigenvectors can be orthonormal. So I, this is all I ever knew about, uh, say, uh, eigenvectors and eigenvalues, and uh, and that's as close as I ever got to learning about the singular value decomposition. But it turns out that this is one of the core techniques in all of data science, and it's something that's going to be really important for us when we're trying to demonstrate convergence of DMD routines and uh, and just uh, even implementing DMD routines, uh, because it turns out that uh, uh, the SVD, uh, when you use a truncated form, actually gives you the best possible approximation to a matrix that you can uh, for a given rank. Uh, and so uh, why don't we go ahead and start talking about what this SVD actually is. Uh, so if we start off with just talking about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, uh, and just think about a self-adjoint matrix. Now, we know that we can take a self-adjoint matrix and find an eigen decomposition. That means that we have these things that we call eigenvalues and these special vectors for which uh, if we operate on the matrix on these eigenvectors, we just get uh, the eigenvalue times the eigenvector back. Uh, and this I uh, basically demonstrates that every self-adjoint matrix uh, can be decomposed into a whole bunch of orthogonal directions that might be just rotated and stretched. And, uh, and that is an excellent characterization of uh, self-adjoint matrices. Uh, it turns out that they're really not that complicated, you're just sort of looking at them in the wrong direction. Now, I, we run into immediate problems when we start talking about things that aren't actually uh, self-adjoint. Uh, if we allow it to be normal, uh, which means that if you take the, the conjugate transpose of a matrix, uh, it commutes with itself, uh, then we're still good. Uh, we uh, get eigenvalues and eigenvectors that are orthonormal, and, and so everything's good there. But even, very few matrices actually end up being uh, normal, and very few are self-adjoint. And so, so there, you already run into a problem where you can sometimes find a matrix that actually doesn't have an eigen decomposition. Uh, but it turns out that they always have a singular value decomposition. Also, uh, not every matrix is square. Uh, so you can't just transpose any old matrix and uh, and get the same and get the same dimensions back. Uh, and so that means that uh, if you have a matrix with say n rows by m columns, uh, that is a matrix that operates on m dimensional vectors and it outputs n dimensional vectors. And so uh, you can't have an eigen decomposition there because you have completely different vectors on the others on one side versus the other. You can't uh, say that a vector that is say uh, five dimensional uh, is a scalar multiple of another vector that is two dimensional. Uh, that just doesn't work. Uh, so. Uh, but we really, really like uh, eigenvalues and, and eigenvectors, and, and we'd like to generalize this uh, further. And that is what the SVD allows us to do. It allows us to take absolutely any matrix and give us something that's almost like an eigen decomposition. And now let's go ahead and talk about the similarities between the, these two ideas. So uh, for an eigen decomposition, one, one, one thing that it tells you is that there's a special collection of vectors, and we already call these eigenvectors. 
Uh, now we can use these eigenvectors to build what we call rank one tensors. Uh, and so that's basically a matrix that uh, has only rank one. And in order to get these rank one matrices, all you need are the eigenvectors. Uh, so what you do is you take an eigenvector, uh, and that's a column, and you multiply it by uh, the tra its transpose, uh, conjugate transpose, uh, and uh, and this product ends up giving you a matrix. Uh, not just if you did it the other way around, it would give you a scalar, uh, and this way, it gives you a matrix. Now, uh, what can we say about this matrix? One, it's self-adjoint. Uh, as long as you took the conjugate transpose of the vector when you turn it into a row, vector, if you do that operation, uh, swaps them uh, both around. And so, uh, so then basically what you can do is you can just multiply that by some constant, uh, say lambda. And if you take that same vector and you hit it, uh, hit the matrix against it, uh, then you basically get that same vector back times lambda. Uh, now, what else can you do? Um, well, you can uh, add more uh, of the from these orthonormal bases that you made for your eigen decomposition. So you can take the next vector, you can do the same sort of thing, add it to the first one, and then that gives you uh, two uh, self-adjoint matrices that are each rank one on their own. Now, if you take the second eigen vector uh, and you hit the, this sum of matrices against it, uh, the first one is now zero, uh, and the second one survives and just gives you that second vector back uh, times the second eigenvalue. And you can continue this decomposition, and uh, this will all ultimately add up to your original vector. And that's what an eigen decomposition does. It breaks down uh, an eigen. It breaks down a self-adjoint matrix into a collection of rank one operators. And we'd like to take the same idea and employ it for non-square uh, matrices. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, uh, if you remember what I was just saying, is that that square matrices will map. Uh, say an m dimensional vector to an n dimensional vector. Uh, and so that adjusts the dimensions of the matrix that you're gonna be talking about. Uh, so ultimately we want each one of our rank one matrices to have n uh, rows and m columns. Uh, and the way we do that is we take uh, a one vector, uh, this will be called u, uh, and we put it up here, and then we take the conjugate transpose of another vector uh, we'll call v, and uh, if we take these two vectors and we multiply them together, uh, if u has uh, is n-dimensional and v is m-dimensional, you get exactly an n by m matrix. Uh, and if you take any vector and you hit it against, hit this matrix against it, the result of that multiplication will ultimately give you a matrix that is in the direction of u. Uh, now, the trick is to determine uh, how to figure out u and v. Uh, it turns out it's not actually all that bad. You can use uh, the eigen decomposition of uh, A transpose A. Uh, and uh, since A transpose A is a self-adjoint matrix, uh, you can go ahead and find the eigen decomposition, and that's what ends up giving you V. How do you figure out what U needs to be? Well, you just take A times V and divide it by the corresponding eigenvalue, and uh, and then that'll give you your vector U. And so, uh, and so then this gives you exactly the UV decomposition that you want, and this is the singular value decomposition. Uh, so you can get this directly from using uh, the, uh, the self-adjoint matrix uh, eigen decomposition, and it gives you uh, the singular value decomposition. Uh, now, of course, you do need uh, A to be a certain size, so you can uh, uh, properly decompose it. Uh, and so I think so. I think what you need is you need uh, to have uh, M being larger to N uh, in order to do the, what the procedure I just gave you. Uh, but if it turns out that um, I n is bigger than m, uh, you can just go ahead and transpose that matrix, uh, do the same uh, routine, and then transpose it back at the end, and uh, and then you're back in business. Uh, so uh, something to keep in mind is that the eigenvalues that you get from A transpose A uh, are all going to be positive, because we know that every eigenvalue from a self-adjoint matrix has to be real. And this is not only a self-adjoint matrix, it's also a positive matrix, uh, which means that all the eigenvalues have to be positive. So this is distinct from what we see uh, when we talk about eigenvalues, and every eigenvalue could is in the complex plane. Uh, so uh, there are definitely matrices that you can I uh, find an eigen decomposition for uh, where the, you're going to have uh, complex roots. So then, how do you end up getting uh, 
a decomposition for a matrix that you know has uh, complex roots, I, e even if it's square and you have an eigen decomposition for it. Uh, what is the relationship between these two? Uh, and so I, the trick here is that u and v don't have to be the same vectors. Uh, for an eigen decomposition, they do. Uh, and so I, when you talk about uh, a singular value decomposition, uh, say of that same matrix, uh, the singular values are all always positive. Uh, and uh, and you can get from an eigen decomposition to a singular value decomposition uh, by basically uh, taking uh, one of your vectors uh, out of your eigen decomposition and, uh, and rotating them uh, by, or not rotating them as a vector, but multiplying by uh, e to the i theta, which is a scalar. Uh, but that can propagate back into uh, your eigenvalues and just rotate the eigenvalues on the complex plane until they're all pointing in the real direction. Uh, and then your v maps to uh, another v in the eigen decomposition, uh, but times uh, some complex number of magnitude 1. So. Uh, one of the most important uh, aspects of uh, the singular value decomposition is that when you add each one of those rank one uh, operations, uh, rank one matrices back together in order to get the singular value decomposition of a matrix, uh, if you stop adding them uh, after ordering all the singular values from say largest to smallest, turns out that that is the best uh, smaller, uh, so if you take a look at that, r the rank of that overall composition, say you stop at, say, uh, um, I or something like that, uh, it turns out that uh, the, the, sing the truncated singular value decomposition uh, of rank I uh, is the best rank I approximation of, uh, of the original matrix uh, in, say, the spectral norm or the Frobenius norm. Uh, two different norms, but uh, it minimizes all the same. And so, uh, and so this, this is a nice result uh, by Eckert and Young uh, in 1936, uh, and that was uh, published in Psychometrica, which is a uh, psychology journal. Uh, and this goes back to uh, the origins of the SVD uh, as uh, a way of measuring somebody's intelligence based on a, a test that they take. Um, and so Eckert and Young were uh, doing some uh, more uh, mathematics in order to back up this uh, intelligence test uh, a notion. And uh, and yeah, and that's what uh, where we saw first saw uh, guarantees given by uh, for the best low rank approximation of a matrix using the SVD. Now, uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break out and uh, and I'm going to end uh, this video, uh, but I'm going to leave you with a couple of links uh, to a more theoretical lecture uh, where I'm going to go through and uh, and give a proof of the SVD decomposition uh, and also of Eckert and Young's theorem. Uh, and now the next uh, few lectures are going to be exploring uh, various aspects of the SVD and their application uh, in and, uh, and the next one uh, is going to be taking a look at what is called eigenfaces. Uh, and this is uh, how we do uh, facial recognition uh, using technology from 1991. All right, so uh, I'm going to stop here. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll see you next time.